Excuse me. Good morning, seventh grade healthcare science class. I was going to try to Zoom and teach you today. However, um, I just tried Zooming with my ILT and I'm not quite sure what's going on, but my Wi Fi at home keeps kicking me out of my own Zooms. Um, we were only in the Zoom for about, you know, 10 minutes, and in that time period, I got kicked out of the Zoom three times. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to live teach today. So I'm just going to go over what we kind of need to cover. Um, I'm going to try to Zoom, but if it doesn't work, oh, sorry, my little vacuum's going off. If it doesn't work, don't worry about it. So we're going to go down here to the cardiovascular system. So go ahead and click on that. And I'll post this video on the top. Um, I would have liked to have finished the cardiovascular PowerPoint. Okay, so I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go through things that we would have discussed and talked about today. Um, and let me also get, and you'll have to excuse me, I'm sure you guys have all done the exact same, where you kind of just woke up and got to school today. But, let me see. Is it going to work? Got it. Perfect. All right. Let me make this a little bit smaller so I can go ahead and Mr. Coach Branch just sent me a text and he said, our daughter went to daycare today and her little friend showed up at daycare the exact same time as her and she got excited about it. So anyway, I'm going to kind of go through this uh, with you guys and hopefully we'll cover enough that you can watch this video. If you don't watch the video, I'm still going to get you caught up. But anyway, so last class, we were talking about how the heart will pump blood to your lungs and then to the rest of your body. So there's two loops. Um, the right side of your heart, which is opposite of what you think, because um, when you see it on paper, I'll show you in a second what I mean, you're going to be like, no, that's the left side. No, it's definitely the right. The right side, the blood will enter in the right atrium, go into the right ventricle, and get pumped into the lungs. In the lungs, that blood will get oxygen thanks to the little teeny tiny grape looking um, structures inside of your lungs. Those are called, they sound like ravioli, it's alveoli, A-L-V-O-L-I. So anyway, the alveoli, what it does is it takes it allows the capillaries to allow oxygen to go into the blood cell and take out that carbon dioxide. So that's where the gas exchange occurs. So that first loop is where you're going to get the oxygen. Then once it comes back into the left side of the heart, you will see that the left side pumps it to the rest of the body. So um, the top parts of the heart are called the atria. The bottom two parts are called the ventricles. Now what you're going to find out, I hate to break it to you guys, your heart is not shaped like this. Yeah. Some cartoon drawing lied to you, and this is not at all what it looks like. Okay, it's kind of more shaped like that. Like that. So anyway, you have the two atria on top and two ventricles on the bottom. The atria, pretty much, they just receive blood, whether it's coming in from the body or coming in from the lungs. Then the ventricles will pump out the blood and whether that be to the lungs or to the body. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So here's our heart structure. And you see here, there is the superior vena cava. There's also going to be an inferior vena cava. That system is going to drop off blood into the right atrium. And here's what I'm saying when I'm saying you're going to tell me it looks backwards. This is on the left side of the picture. But if you were to take this heart, rip it off the PowerPoint, and put it inside my body, um, it would be my right side, so like the patient's right side, um, not what you're looking at, because when you face somebody else, the patient's right and your right are going to be opposite. So we're going to talk more about that when we talk about taking an evaluation um, and doing an evaluation with a patient, because you have to do a lot of thinking where you're like, oh, is it the patient's right arm or the left arm? Because when you're looking at it, it's opposite of what your right and left are. So anyway, it drops it into the right atrium, then it's going to pass through this valve right here, okay? And that will go into the right ventricle. It'll pump out into the right pulmonary artery. Cool fun fact about the human body, this is the one and only artery that will pump deoxygenated blood. All the rest of your arteries in your body will pump 
oxygenated blood. This is the one and only one in the entire body system that will have deoxygenated blood. So anyway, then it goes to the lungs. It picks up the oxygen. It comes back through the pulmonary veins. And again, another weird situation. Most of like, it, all of your veins are carrying deoxygenated blood, okay? Um, which I believe I told you last class that deoxygenated blood is not going to look blue. It will always look red, but I did find a picture that I wanted to share with you because it is a deeper red, but it's nonetheless, it's red. Let me go ahead and find it. Here we go. So um, you can see here at the top, that's venous blood. And you can see how it's more of like a purple, whereas the arterial blood is more of a red. So anyway, when you're physically looking at it, the, the venous blood will be a little bit more purple. The arterial blood will be a little bit more red, red, like bright red. But anyway, no matter what, it's still red. So it's more, not even like a purple, it's like a burgundy, really, like a burgundy up there. So anyway, um, this is the only pulmonary, this is the only vein in your entire body that will carry oxygenated blood back to the heart. So the only place where you're going to find that this case is the opposite is with the heart system. Okay. So anyway, the oxygenated blood comes back into the left atrium and then it gets dumped into the left ventricle. And then your left ventricle works really hard to pump that blood to the rest of your body. Okay. Now, if you look, you'll notice this right atrium, the muscle mass is not as defined as the left atrium. Like, look at that left atrium. It's beefy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see that that left atrium, the space looks smaller, but that's because the muscular wall here is much, much larger. The reason why the muscular wall here is much, much larger is because this ventricle has to pump blood to the entire body. This ventricle only has to pump blood to the lungs. It's not that far. You don't need a lot of muscle to do that. So this guy's kind of wimpy. This guy is like you know, got it going on, been working at a lot, um, been doing its thing. So it'll pump the blood into the aorta and the aorta is um, the artery that's going to take that blood to wherever it needs to go. It goes up into the head, it goes down into the abdomen. So anyway, that's kind of how the blood goes through the body. And if you're listening to this whole thing and you're like, what did you just, I don't even use, I, what? Uh-huh. I'm with you. There's a video. It's a, a lot clearer than me. I do the best I can, but you know, sometimes I get too excited about things. All right, so there's two actions of the heart. You know that you have two different heart sounds. It's lub-dub, okay, lub-dub, lub-dub, lub-dub. The first phase, the heart relaxes. In order for your blood to fill into the heart, there has to be an opening. So when your heart relaxes, the blood will flow into the atria. Now remember, from the right atria, you're gonna get blood from the body. The left atria, you're gonna get blood from the lungs. Then once that is full, it contracts and it pumps it down into the ventricles. Then it refills and then the ventricles get pumped out to the body. So it's this whole idea of relax and contract, relax and contract. It says the average heart rate varies from one person to the next, and we said that that range is typically between 60 and 100 beats. All right, so your blood vessels. There's a couple of blood vessels, and I'm so thankful because Coach Thompson decided to model his veins for me. Mr. Coach Branch also has great veins, however, um, he is currently dropping our daughter off at daycare, so here we go. There are three types of blood vessels. There are arteries, and the arteries carry blood away from the heart. Now, your arteries, your arteries you can actually feel. If you've ever taken a pulse, you're technically putting your finger on an artery. Now, before you pause this video and start like trying to take your own pulse, okay, first off, let's go ahead and cover some things. You never take a pulse with a thumb. So if you're sitting here watching this video and you're like, don't worry. Everybody tries to take a pulse with your thumb. You're going to want to take it with two or three fingers. It's just going to kind of depend. Now, there's a couple of places I'm sure you guys know there's an artery. One is your carotid. Okay. If you've had PE, I am positive that in PE they have tried to teach you how to take it. And sometimes you can find it really easily and sometimes you cannot. We're going to practice this more in class. So if like you're like, I can't get a finger on an artery, I totally get that. Now, you also have an artery here underneath your thumb side. So whether it's your left hand or your right hand, it doesn't matter, it's still on the thumb side. It's over a bone called the radius, which is why it's called a radial pulse. 
the best advice I can give you while we're not in class, and again, I will help you find these when you guys come into class, is to take your dominant hand, okay, take your dominant hand, and you're going to place it, there's a bone that you can feel right here in the wrist. I am certain that you have hit this like on a countertop and you've been like, oh my God, that hurts so bad. Yes, we have all done that before. Take your, three, your two or three fingers and you're gonna kind of put your fingers right near that bone where you can feel that bone stick out. So you're, it's kind of hard for me to show you on the camera, but you're gonna put your hands here. You should be able to feel that artery and you can feel that artery beat because the artery is strong. It's made of muscle, like that thing works out. It like physically pumps the blood, okay. Capillaries, how you can see capillaries, you can do this at home yourself. We do this all the time in the medical field when we're checking for uh, blood flow to see if anybody is either having a compromised blood flow or make sure that they have good blood flow. If you are a lady and you currently have your fingernails painted, I'm so, so, so sorry. You can't necessarily do this, but, they are, the smar they are the smallest arteries and blood flows through them so that way oxygen and nutrients can dissolve through. Now, you can see these capillaries in action by taking that fingernail, okay? If you squish, and I'm not saying like do it as hard as you can because like I don't need you breaking a nail or for like an email from your mom being like, why is it that my child just bruised up their finger? I don't know, ma'am. I didn't give that direction. Okay, you're just gonna give it a little squeeze. And when you do, you're gonna notice that that finger nail is gonna turn white and then pink. Now that happened very quickly. So just give me a second. Boom. Okay, you can do this at home and you watch it yourself. And just check and you can see how your finger goes from like a, yellowy color back to its normal pink or brownish color okay what's happening is you have these teeny tiny capillaries underneath your um, fingernail that you can kind of see through it's like a little window because these are like little capillaries that are in your skin and when you squish those little that blood out when you open it back up and you let go the blood will refill those capillaries and you'll see it turn pink you can also see these capillaries in action after you've been working out. If your face turns pink and red, what happens is your capillaries dilate, meaning they get bigger, so that way the heat from your body can escape through those dilated capillaries. So if you're somebody who, when somebody tells you something, you start to blush, that's your capillaries in action, your facial capillaries. They are dilating their little butts off and they are showing the redness, which is why you see that red form because that's actually the blood. So if you had, um, not to name drop here, Coach Woods in sixth grade, okay? You know that when Coach Woods gets excited, whether that's something he thinks is funny, whether he gets mad in class or whatever, his face turns red. Okay, it's just the man's capillaries in action. Okay, so if you ever wanna see your capillaries in action, there you go. Arteries, you'd feel a pulse. Veins, veins are kind of wimpy. Okay, I don't have very good veins. Um, I do when obviously it's hot out and I'm sweating. So I asked Coach Thompson if I could take a picture of his veins. Obviously he was a division one athlete, the guy's got veins. So anyway, you can see in his arm how the veins pop out and they look like kind of little worms under the skin. Now veins, if you were to find one, so if you look right here, typically in your forearm, there'll be one guy, this juicy guy right here. Um, it's on the lateral part of your elbow, so like your inner elbow. So anyway, if you squish that thing, okay, it kind of collapses. You also might have one here on your forearm that you can see right here, and if you kind of squish on that, it doesn't really stick up. It's wimpy, and I'm gonna show you why. So here's the artery. Look at that beefy muscle looks good wow okay now look at this mm. that's the that's the capillary cross section wimpy wimpy okay that's why it's so easy to squeeze the blood out of it and then look at this one this one's the vein not as beefy as this guy do you see the difference like whoo look at all that smooth muscle look how thick that smooth muscle is the smooth muscle there's a pink then there's a darker pink then there's another light pink. So it's like baby, hot, baby. So, and by hot, I mean like the color pink. So baby pink, hot pink, baby pink. And you're like, whoa, look at all that muscle. Now take a look at this guy right here, okay? <whistles> look at that hot pink. Isn't that a lot of smooth muscle? No. So they're very collapsible, okay? And the way that veins work is they actually have a system of valves that will bring the blood back to the heart. But if you've ever had an ankle sprain and you have had swelling in your foot, you know it takes a long time to get that swelling out. And the reason is 
Your heart will pump blood to the area. Your arteries will help pump blood to the area. But once the blood is there, it has to work its way out. And the valves work with your muscles to be able to like open up and send blood back. So if you're not moving your ankle after you've sprained it because it hurts, that blood will just kind of pool in there. So anyway, here's some vocab I would love for you to read and get to know and embrace and get into and be like, mm, I love that. Yes. Ooh, wow. Oh, learning so much. What? Brain stuff. Wow. Okay, so you can read that on your own. I fully trust you to do so. Alrighty, next up. I'm going to click the next button. I've got the flow of blood through the heart video. I'll play it for you here. You can also watch it Veins on Veins are blood vessels containing blood flowing to the heart, while arteries have blood flowing from the heart. The blue is representative of blood vessels containing deoxygenated blood while the red blood vessels have oxygenated blood fresh from the lungs. Now, let's follow the path of the blood through the heart. The superior vena cava receives blood from the head, neck, upper limbs, and chest. Meanwhile, the inferior vena cava receives blood from the trunk, viscera, and lower limbs. Both the superior and inferior vena cava end up in the right atrium, one of the four chambers of the heart. The heart not only has four chambers, it also has four valves. The purpose of the valves is to keep blood moving in the right direction and not flow backwards. Blood exits the right atrium through the tricuspid valve, so called because it has three flaps, and enters the right ventricle. The blood exits the right ventricle through the pulmonary valve and enters the pulmonary artery. Again, it is an artery because blood is flowing away from the heart, but it is blue because it lacks oxygen. The pulmonary artery then splits into the left and right pulmonary arteries, which go to each respective lung. In the lungs, gas exchange occurs. The blood discards carbon dioxide and picks up oxygen. Now, blood comes back from the lungs through the pulmonary veins, entering the left atrium. Next, the blood is pumped into the left ventricle through the mitral or bicuspid valve. Finally, the oxygenated blood leaves the left ventricle through the aortic semilunar valve, entering the aortic arch. The aorta, which is the largest of all the arteries, distributes the oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. The aortic arch has three major branches, which supply the head and arms with blood. Then, the aorta curls downward behind the heart, forming the descending aorta, which descends through the chest and continues down through the abdomen. In the abdomen, the descending aorta splits to supply the pelvis and legs with blood. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It would help. Wonderful. So now we've got that taken care of. It talked about the flow of blood through the heart. I'm not going to pause the video. I'm going to let that video do its magic. All righty. Now, class is going to be a little bit shorter, but the last thing I want you to do is this flow of blood through the heart interactive. I'm going to show you what to do. I'm going to tell you some directions. Now, if you try to drag the wrong thing to a number, it will not let you attach. So please don't get, excuse me, I have hiccups. Don't get lazy and think, okay, I'm just going to see what number lights up. I want you to actually practice this. So we talked about how this number one blood vessel is going to be the superior vena cava. Now there's also, excuse me, hiccups, the inferior vena cava down here. So the blood will go through here first. That's why it's a number one. Then there's a number two. That's going to be the right atrium, which I believe is down here. Yes, right atrium. Okay. Now it's going to go through the right atrium through the tricuspid valve. From there, it'll go into the right ventricle. Now, we have to go back up here, and you'll see a number six. So we've done one, two, three, four, and then we gotta do five right here. That is the pulmonary valve, okay? Then number six is gonna be the pulmonary artery, because it takes blood away. Okay, and I don't like that it's red, because technically it's deoxygenated blood, but hey, whatever. Then it goes into the lungs. Now it's going to return through the pulmonary vein. It's going to enter in the right atrium. It'll go down the mitral valve into the left ventricle through the aortic valve and then to the aorta and out to the heart. Then if I were to check, yay, I've got it all correct. So what you're going to do is you're going to do this interactive for about, you know, five, ten minutes. and Try to memorize the flow of blood 
through the heart. I've already shown you guys exactly how it goes. Don't get lazy and just drag where it clicks and you know connects. Make sure you guys actually know what this is. Once you get to this part, you are done for the day, okay? I'm not gonna keep you in class for the entire 100 minutes. Um, yesterday, my seventh grade class, I said, since we're gonna be virtual tomorrow and I have no idea how that's gonna go, we'll just get to this part and then we'll stop. So go ahead, once you have gotten this flow of blood through the heart memorized, you are done for the day. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you on Monday. Alrighty guys, let me see if I can, oh no, that is not what I meant to do, I apologize. Did not try to put the focus on me, just tried to exit and I'll be posting this on the front page of your Canvas page.